Afua Rose, the trauma pimp, date of birth, July 4th, 1969, gender, female, place of birth, London, United Kingdom, ethnicity, black Caribbean African descent, heritage, first generation black British, daughter of two Windrush immigrants from Jamaica, religion, Born again Christian, baptized following incarceration, also claims to be a Hebrew Israelite. Political affiliation, Pan-African, allegedly. Marital status, divorced from Viv Amun, father of her second set of children. The identity of first child's father is publicly unknown. Separated from fellow convict and father of her last child convictions served prison sentence in hm prison for international narcotics trafficking profession psychotherapist allegedly wants to be known for standing up against sa culture in south london primarily being a poet and vocalist with the exception of performance poetry as part of a duo throughout the 90s there is no recent track record of this known for immorality and unethical conduct towards both men and women flamboyant lying slackness and vulgarity naming black men predominantly from south london as sa offenders with or without evidence and directly exposing her female audience to ex-convicts without disclosing this information known for hating black men and advising her audience to only date men who are not of dominant african descent hating black women who don't support her cause also known for harassing and attacking women who refuse to be controlled by her narrative verbal abuse against women in the sex industry and recipients of plastic surgery partnering with patrick nathaniel knight aka killer p a known convict who did time in HM prison for beating the mother of his child with an ironing board and has an extensive history of domestic violence against women, narcotics dealing, robbery and crying online about being beaten up by an older man. Patrick Nathaniel Knight has been renounced by his immediate and wider South London community for allegedly being an undercover police informant. Also known for admitting to scheming for several months under a false identity to entrap the father of her youngest child in order to create a viral video where she chases him through a London park while berating him for unpaid child support. Claims Claims to work with the Met Police The Met Police have categorically denied these claims. Claims Several defamation suits against her some are presently in court. Here are the definitions of some of the key terms used within this video. Trauma. Trauma is a psychological and emotional response to a distressing or disturbing event or series of events that are perceived as physically, mentally or emotionally harmful. Trauma can have a profound impact on an individual's mental and emotional well-being and it can manifest in various ways. Trauma can lead to a wide range of emotional and psychological responses, anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, dissociation and other mental health issues. Individuals who have experienced trauma may also struggle with trust issues, emotional regulation and self-esteem. 
Trauma can have physical manifestations such as insomnia, nightmares, fatigue, and heightened stress responses, fight or flight reactions. Needless to say, in a patriarchal society, women and children experience chronically high levels of trauma. And for the descendants of the Caribbean and Windrush generation, who represent a large percentage of the South London and London population, there has been endless traumas endured by women at the hands of unevolved males and sometimes at the hands of other women. Unfortunately, as times change, we have seen an increase in barbaric behavior from women. This year alone in Jamaica, several women are on trial for unliving their own children and the children of others. A number of women who have been charged with the responsibility of raising, protecting and nurturing the children of this planet have become insipid with a new level of inhumane behavior and unfortunately, behaviors that are usually associated with males. So when exhibited in women, it is understandably shocking to society. Pimp, a man who exploits women and or controls sex workers taken a large percentage of their earnings in return. This is often accompanied by mental, verbal and physical abuse. Patriarchy A system of society or government in which men hold the power and women are largely excluded from it. A social disease bred in humans through mental conditioning that predates white supremacy and is largely found to be rooted in religion where doctrine suggests that women are not equal citizens to men, but rather born to become their property through marriage, slavery, inheritance, and war. Trauma Pimp The term trauma pimp is not a widely recognized or standard term within psychological or clinical contexts. It is often used informally to describe someone who exploits or manipulates another person's traumatic experiences for their own gain, whether it be for attention, sympathy, financial benefit, or some other personal advantage. This could involve exaggerating or falsely claiming traumatic experiences, using someone else's trauma for personal gain, or otherwise exploiting vulnerable individuals. This is a No Frills Black History Month and Halloween exclusive about a 54-year-old grandmother. Her name is Denise Rose and her public name is Afua Rose from Afua Speaks YouTube channel and the current director of Afua Speaks Limited. In her own words, Afua Trauma Pimp Rose is a psychotherapist, an activist, poetess, vocalist, social commentator and pan-Africanist. Her self-description is as elaborate as it is fraudulent as following my own personal experience with her and upon completing my investigation into her conduct and character, this glory-seeking female who I must refrain from defining as a woman due to her inability to grow into the years she has spent on this planet is a trauma pimp. I am here today to address the demonic behavior and consistent misconduct of Afua Trauma Pimp Rose, as is my responsibility, not only as an innocent recipient of her venomous character, but also as a keen observer of the corruption, treachery, and immoral behavior of a female who has relinquished her right to be defined as a woman. How, you may ask, can a female relinquish her right to be defined as a woman? Simple. A woman relinquishes the right to be seen as a woman when she refuses to utilize the ultimate feminine qualities of compassion, empathy, and love universally associated with being a woman. Femininity is not, in contrast to modern perspective, speaking in a soft voice, being submissive to the opposite sex, and dressing in a way men find appealing. That narrative emerges from patriarchal conditioning. Ultimate femininity is actually being loving, empathetic, compassionate, creative, and powerful. This can manifest as gentle or fierce power, either the soothing, regenerating balm that women are both adored and used for, or 
a penetrative cutlass of self-defense for self, loved ones, humanity and nature, depending on what each situation requires. However, when a female seeks to profit, not from spearheading justice and healing for women who have experienced sexual trauma, but from telling their mostly unverified stories to an angry audience of SA survivors, while deliberately creating no space for healing, rehabilitation and growth to occur, especially a female who claims to be a trained psychotherapist, who has full access to healing tools and awareness of ethical behavior, one can see her as a tool of destruction, an exploiter of human pain, and for lack of a better term, a trauma pimp. Afro Rose seemingly started her anti-SA campaign two years ago from a place of genuine concern for women in the South London community who had made several allegations about being assaulted by a well-known man named Vincent Rat. She exposed the depth of this travesty online and consequently several official bodies including the Met Police and Children's Homes were also complicit in what appears to be a tirade of SA against women and children going back several decades. She began her journey on Instagram where she would go live and speak about these issues. Consequently, her platform grew and attracted both supporters and inevitable enemies. She then moved her platform to YouTube as she sought to monetize from the pain of others. Women kept coming forward and Afua continued to expose men who were alleged assaulters of women. Now this all sounds great on paper, especially if one has a non-critical bias towards women and their safety. But the truth isn't quite as simple. The initial problem is that Afua Rose doesn't only call out male assaulters of women, she also calls out men who are innocent of the serious allegations she makes. And due to her negligence in fact-checking and limited resources, she has become both a celebrated and hated figure, depending on the intelligence and integrity of those who have any perspective about her work. I know this from first-hand experience as a survivor of SA and a survivor of the mental disease that is patriarchy. While I have used the internet to document and investigate the perpetrators of my own assault, Afua Rose hasn't centered her work around her own child grooming and molestation experiences. Instead, her mission is to inflate her own name by monetizing the assault stories of other women, which makes it practically impossible for her to verify all the stories she reports, as many occurred decades ago. She also simply needs to hear a story to decide if it is accurate which I document in the video, my experience with ex-con Afua Rose, when ego eclipses mission, toxic femininity and treachery. I know this view may not sit well with some women, but being a woman does not make you immediately moral. Living in Jamaica, I grew to know of several women who falsely accused men of SA for several personal reasons. And so as important as it is to hold sacred space and empathy for survivors of SA, once someone is human, discernment has to be applied regardless of their gender. Basically, some women are wicked. In her evident hate for black men, it is understandable why Afro Rose jumps on almost every report that comes to her. Her channel relies on these stories as she can provide no further education and when they become sparse, she uses her platform to bully and attack innocent women and men there have been cases where women have recanted the statements made against their ex-partners and admitted publicly online that they had sent in malicious reports to Afua. And yet, she only recently adjusted her verification process when I called her out online for this malpractice. 
Recently, a teenage girl was unalived in Croydon, South London, and Afra Rose irresponsibly posted a photo and details of a young black man who she accused of committing this heinous crime. This immediately put an innocent male's life at long-term risk and even when she recanted the statement after the Met Police announced having the correct suspect in custody rather than take responsibility for her unprofessional and cruel conduct she attempted to brush it off by claiming to have seen numerous people posting the information which led to her sharing it she proudly calls her Instagram page the wall of shame and regularly threatens men and women about potentially posting them on it if they don't conform to her skewed reality. Additionally, she colludes with known trolls, people who run false accounts solely to defame others, to create spin and propaganda for her channel. Afua functions much more like a politician who is running for government than a woman who is seeking justice. Given the justice systems of most countries around the world, it is hard to get a conviction for SA. But in the case of Afua Rose, in contrast to the amount of allegations she has made online, her conviction rate is sorely lacking. Allegations have surfaced that Afua Rose is more sinister than it may appear. She is alleged to be a Freemason and part of a demonic cult that generates and then consumes negative human energy in order to sustain itself. As extreme as these allegations may be, they don't seem unfounded when her conduct is thoroughly examined. Here are some questions to consider. Why does Afua Rose refuse to create a charity or non-profit organization around her work? She has stated that she is avoiding white supremacy, an overused excuse by modern Pan-Africans who know it will trigger their audience due to the existence of white supremacy and the impact on the lives of black people. She claims there is too much red tape and financial auditing which indicates a desire to not be held accountable for the way she uses the funding she receives, largely through donations, which are rarely disclosed to the public. Afua Rose prefers to utilize public funds for her own personal gain without external review. Her business, Afua Speaks Limited, was formed in October 2021 and consistently fails to submit tax documents in a timely manner. It is once again facing a legal strike from the company's house with a view to dissolve the company. Why does Afua accuse men of SA and in cases where it is clearly disproven, refuses to recant her statements? Why does Afua have no concern for the destruction of the families and children connected to those who she spreads allegations about online? Why does Afua attack women online if she claims to be a woman's rights activist and claims to know what patriarchy is? What examples exist of Afua Rose's misconduct? Why does she tell people they will find nothing online when they investigate her past? It is because she is cunningly aware that her entire work and personal history has been completely wiped from the internet and often finds excuses for the frail descriptions of her work history. For example, on LinkedIn, where none of her roles reflect the job of a psychotherapist. Why does Afua Rose have security who work for free or at a reduced cost when men statistically and historically don't care about women's rights? Is it possible these men support her with an ulterior agenda, which is the cultivation of evil for the consumption of demonic forces? Why did Afua Rose have security for herself at the His Time Is Up March in 2022, but no official security for the vulnerable female demonstrators of all ages that she invited to protest? Does she not deem the safety and lives of her supporters, who are mainly SA and DV survivors, important? She put all of her supporters at risk during the last march, and sadly, this included the safety of her own child who is a minor and was left unaccompanied throughout most of the march. She had received over £3,000 in public support, which includes a donation I made myself, and yet, 
She refused to use this money to hire professional security for all present at the march. Ask yourself why. Why did Afua ask Killer P, Patrick Nathaniel Knight, the Pussycat, a convict of domestic violence, to volunteer as security for her women's rights march when he is a documented threat to all women? Why does she continue to represent him, even though I made him confess online to his DV conviction, when I ferociously instructed his audience to run a Claire's Law report on him to establish the truth about his violent ways? What does Afua's behavior mean, and what is her true role in society? What seeds is she planting, and who is reaping the fruit it bears? If Afua is a psychotherapist, as she states, rather than the psychopath she acts like, she will have in-depth knowledge about the subconscious mind and the differences between male and female psychology. She has the academic know-how and ability to manipulate the unsuspecting minds of women in a way they may not realize. Twisting words like a snake with a split tongue or a multi-headed beast, if indeed psychotherapy is her academic background, instead of a liberator of women, what we have is a heartless trauma pimp, an exploiter and shapeshifter who literally monetizes the trauma of women who, according to various reputable sources, are the subconscious energy of this planet and consequently, without full knowledge of self, very easy to manipulate, patriarchize and control. What happens when a female abandons or never had access to her higher characteristics of womanhood? What happens when a female has no conscience, no sisterhood and no compassion for those she sees herself as better than in clear denial of her own molestation experience, which implies a woman should be ashamed of their assault experience? What happens when women develop comradeship with a female who has stated publicly that she cannot have female friends? A woman who fails to rise into womanhood and raise her children as is the natural order of things. A woman who behaves like an unevolved male. Why does Afro Rose attack women with plastic surgery, sex workers, and women who have had their children taken away from them while threatening to attack them physically. Is her concern only for people who share the same belief system she does? And if so, is she truly a supporter of women? Why does Afro Rose publicly berate and abuse women who clearly have mental health issues when she herself is a psychotherapist? Does that behavior fall within the ethical code of a therapist? Question. If psychotherapy is so impactful on one's healing and behavior, why aren't the benefits of this evident in Afua's behavior? Why is a 53-year-old at the time black female, a mother and grandmother, who clearly has the ability to earn and provide for her own child, spending months pretending to be someone else, just so she can vengefully accost her own child's father on film solely with the intent to shame him publicly and monetize her own inability to accept the situation she finds herself in as a single mother. Why can teenage mothers conduct themselves with more integrity when their children are fathered by males who decide to be absent from the children's lives? If psychotherapy is such an impactful healing tool, why is Afua back to fronting? Back to fronting is when someone starts life off with what seems to be the right foot, but ends up regressing to levels of experiences usually associated with youth. Afua Rose personally told me she had her children with a stable and consistent partner, Viva Moon. And if I'm not mistaken, a first child with another man. She was able to have stability with her husband and children, a home, a career that according to her, but unverifiable due to her history being wiped off the internet, took them from supporting and allegedly exploiting small businesses to working with Trident, the UK's black-on-black -black knife crime prevention program. It is clear 
She worked with her former husband and part of her rage is due to her inability to heal from a feeling of being used and being the ultimate sacrifice for him and his success. Upon divorcing Viv Amun, instead of healing and rising into victory, she had a child with a man who was unable to provide in the way her ex-husband did. She was incarcerated for a crime that a woman of her age and education had no business being involved in. Yet, under the guise of black economic liberation and anti-white supremacy, that same overused excuse of many alleged Pan-Africans, she attempts to wear this discretion as a badge of honor to prevent others from analyzing her clear misconduct and lack of good character. How was Afua Rose able to, one, fall from a corporate position to gaining a conviction as an international narcotics trafficker? Two, have a relationship and subsequent child with an ex-convict like herself? Three, resort to disgracefully filming and revealing the identity of the father of her youngest child with the intent of showcasing the video online for the whole world to see. Four, fail to see that while she was seeking to degrade and demean her child's father, she was degrading not only herself, not only her child who she claimed to be vindicating, but black women in general. She proved that regardless of her alleged level of education, she was only too happy to be a stereotype for all of society to see. 5. How beneficial can her alleged psychotherapy qualifications and experiences be when it is clear on several counts that she is unable to use this experience to do the most important thing women need to do right now on this planet, to heal herself? 6. Why does Afua Rose lie to create content, slander both men and women with no care for how this may impact them and their families? 7. Was she always this morally insipid or is this the result of the traumas and disappointments in love that she herself hasn't resolved? 8. Is her unresolved anger towards her ex-husband for what she alleges was consistent infidelity the true wound that she is disguising with her indignation? 9. Is Afua in competition with her ex-husband, who she clearly did her best to support in the spirit of black love and pan-Africanism? Narratives that are used to exploit women to be martyrs for men while never gaining the love and commitment she desired from him? 10. Is Afua Speaks and the His Time Is Up cyber movement simply a disguise for the old adage, Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned? Or can there be something more sinister at play? Something unmentionable to most? A recruitment from the evil forces that permeate this planet in an ongoing battle with the forces of goodness? One of the allegations that has repeatedly surfaced throughout my research for this video is the idea that Afua Rose is a plant within the black community, an agent of chaos whose role is to strategically lower the vibration of women and by default, the entire black population. I mention the black population because her work is exclusive to black men and women, not all men and all women of all races. 11. Is Afua building bridges and creating safe spaces for women with her expertise? Absolutely not. Clearly, even bringing Patrick Nathaniel Knight, Killer P the Pussycat, into her fold demonstrates this. Dangerous is the woman whose tongue doesn't belong to her. It can undress and reveal her in a way no man can. Afua Rose spoke at length to me about Mega Man, a former member of the So Solid crew, an iconic British music group from the late 90s. From this crew came a number of prominent entertainers, including Ashley Walters, an actor, who is most recently known for playing the character of Duchesne in Top Boy. 
Unfortunately, in the early days of So Solid, one of the most prominent group members, Mega Man, who was truly loved across the UK, was put on trial for being complicit in unaliving someone. And upon his release, he has taken steps to improve his own community. Part of this solidarity manifested in him showing support to Afro Rose during the initial growth of her whistleblowing. Mega Man provided security for the first His Time Is Up March held in Brixton in 2021 and he has continued to offer support to her platform. However, Afro Rose has no loyalty to anyone. In 2022, when she was planning the second His Time Is Up March, she complained directly to me that Mega Man hadn't offered security as was done the year prior. I told her to simply ask him for help because I'm a practical, solution-focused woman and I don't care for complaining or gossip. I was shocked when after the march, upon not receiving further support from Mega Man, Afawa spoke about knowing that Mega Man was a police informant and went on to state that this is the reason why he was released from prison way in advance of the sentence time he was given. Please note, this is categorically untrue and a simple internet search will reveal that Mega Man, real name Dwayne Vincent, attended a first trial during which the jury could not form a verdict and was released from prison after a year because the jury found him not guilty after a retrial. This, in addition to other disgusting statements from her, made it crystal clear to me just how fickle, vindictive and evil Afua Rose is. She suffers from a clear short-term memory and even worse, she is the perfect example of an ingrate. She suffers from the lack of gratitude and conscientiousness that I've observed in a female for a very long time. As soon as she stopped receiving what she wanted from Mega Man, a man who did not have to support her in any way, she was only too willing to throw him under the bus. The same way she threw her youngest daughter's father under the bus when she spent weeks and months sweet-talking him by pretending to be a woman he met at a party. This is the same way she will turn on anyone who doesn't do as she desires, including, unfortunately for her, myself. Is it possible, as the allegations infer, that Afra Rose isn't just a deeply wounded woman? A woman who hasn't had the best loving experiences with the men she chooses? Is it possible that Afra Rose is a demon consciously working for negative forces in order to foster hate and evil in the hearts of people just so she can feed this energy to an even more demonic entity and organization? Based on her own behavior, it definitely is possible. If those who are observing the culture want to see what the truth is, simply pay attention. Whatever the truth is, there are too many red flags surrounding this trauma pimp for her not to be acknowledged as a female demonic force. Someone who summons hate, rage, fear and war in the hearts of women and men, knowing it will trickle throughout the lives of everyone they come into contact with. The barbaric way she uses a woman's vagina and sexuality, the same aspects that are targeted in SA and gender-based violence, in a bid to attack the same kind of women she pretends to be defending. Something doesn't add up. And we all need to do the maths for ourselves. It is our personal responsibility not to suspend our disbelief in the way one does when watching a play or reading a book or watching a film. Afro Rose is not only a trauma pimp, she is a demon. And her track record, the one that hasn't been wiped from the internet, evinces that. She has hurt and disturbed so many innocent women and men. The old school era is over. This is the 2020s and our intellect is not to be surpassed by technology and algorithms. 
We need to think clearly, ask for the intelligence, not just sheer desire and emotion to guide our perceptions. When we create standards and zero tolerance for antagonists of women, therefore antagonists of nature, we won't accept the obvious infiltration of culture by abnormal influences whose sole purpose is to feast on the pain and suffering of others. I think for myself, and I want others to have the freedom to do the same. My thoughts are simply a drop in the ocean of consciousness, and yet, I drop them all the same as quality, not quantity, matters. I hope you take the time to consider and examine Afua Rose from all angles, especially the ones she works passionately to disguise. One day, this video and all videos that express legitimate disdain for the trauma pimp will be used as a reference to assess who she truly is and for this reason i am thankful i've had the opportunity to create it although my primary focus is my personal creativity delving into this topic was not a distraction it is a worthy pursuit for a woman who recognizes that her value lies not in the hands and eyes of others a marriage status or anything external women men children Protect your minds in these serious times as evil no longer lurks only at your door waiting to penetrate your homes. It comes directly to you through dangerous people who spread propaganda and lies through your phone. If you have any information to contribute regarding Afua Rose, please reach out. Living in this place that I call I This world that I call mine My world is so precious It's so sacred Anybody tries to infiltrate Gets erased and replaced with Beautiful vibrations Offer me separation. You offer me self degradation. You want to replace my peace with confusion. Want me not to love myself. You thrive when I'm deluded. You offer me self destruction. You give me poisons and the instructions. You give me false images to distort my vision It's like a death on mission to destroy my vibration Check 
everything that you come and talk But to me, living in this place that I call I This world that I call mine I decline your offer Living in this place that I call I This world that I call mine I decline your offer Your offer
They love her when she is submissive, when she is sensual, when she is fine. But they hate her when she expresses what is on the feminine mind. Living in this place that I call I, this world that I call mine. Oh,